Well, there are those who say, we've got to reduce the debt. Hey, I know we've got to reduce the debt. Madam Chair, we've had extensive conversations. You have some very meaty ideas worthy of consideration. But let's make it clear, Social Security should not be on the table. When they say all options are on the table, let's put all options on the table for those programs that created the debt, that created the deficit. Social Security did not create our debt. And why it is part of the super committee conversation, debate, and even hit list, I don't know. Now, that casts no disparagement against any member of the committee. I'm talking about somehow or another, editorial boards who know everything about everything all of the time have said, you've got to do something about Social Security. We know that we have to reform Social Security to modernize it for a 21st century economy and a 21st century demography. We get that. But it doesn't belong in the super committee up against the wall with impossible deadlines, up against the wall with impossible mandate. So while they're looking at revenue, discretionary spending, military spending, Social Security does not belong there. The reform of Social Security belongs in another environment. So that's position number one. Position number two is what are we doing on Social Security? Well, I am concerned that we're about to shred this social contract, and we're going to do it by doing something called the chained CPI. Isn't that a terrible word? Chained CPI. Wow. I'm afraid <coughs> that we're going to change seniors to poverty. So let me tell you what a chained CPI is. When you read all of the books that we get, policy books, chain CPI would cut Social Security by $112 billion over 10 years. They do it by changing the way the cost of living is calculated. It's based on kind of this theory. It's based on a theory of human behavior one word, those social engineering schemes. And what it says is this. It assumes that a consumer will substitute lower cost items when the cost that they normally purchase goes up. Well, that means, again, in theory, if the price of apples goes up, you're going to buy an, a an orange. It sounds good. But for the debate on Social Security, it is inappropriate because the market basket of purchase by senior citizens, validated by every economic and marketing group, says their largest expenditure is health care. And the reason they do it on health care is because they need it to keep alive. This isn't trading a latte for Dunkin' Donuts. This isn't going from arugula to bib lettuce. This is life. This is life on the line when we're about to cut the seniors' bottom line. We've got to get real here and talk about what is the way seniors live, what is it they need to do to stay alive, and what is it they're purchasing power? So here's not Barb Mikulski. The Social Security people themselves say there's something called, you know, the market basket for elderly, CPIE. And it means they spend their money on health care, on food, and on energy, and in many cases, housing. They cannot reduce those costs. Those are fixed costs for which they have no choice and no negotiating power. Our citizens, our senior citizens, cannot negotiate on their heat. They cannot dis negotiate much on their prescription drugs. Oh, they might go from a brand name to a generic, 
but if their cost of living is being squeezed down, they can't be able to do it. You can't substitute your medication, your insulin, and substitute it for apricot juice. If the cost of prescription drugs goes up, so does medication. So I'm concerned that this chain CPI, human behavior, untested, untried social engineering scheme is going to become the basis by which we calculate the cost of living. Now let me go to some facts. And by the way, this isn't Senator Barb Mikulski talking. This is the Social Security Actuary. The actuary actually giving accurate facts. Let's go to the A word. The actuary actually giving accurate facts. First of all, this, uh, they say that this is a technical fix and doesn't mean a whole lot to seniors. Actually, the change CPI will fundamentally restructure Social Security. If we do it, we will be complicit and complacent in creating a structurally induced poverty for old people. What do we mean? Well, if you look at this chart, and this comes from the actuary, that if you go to the chain CPI, and the purchasing power that they talk, first of all, it will go into immediate effect. Then it actually cuts, it's not like, you know how the seniors were upset that they didn't get a cost of living two years in a row? They'll actually get a reduced benefit. And under the way this will be calculated, hypothetically, if you're now getting 15,132 on Social Security, if you're getting it when you're 65 now, 10 years from now, your benefit will be reduced. Not only won't you get your cost of living, but your benefit will be reduced to $14,572. Now, if you continue to live and you're 85, it will be reduced to 14148 It compounds itself. So God forbid you even make it another 30 years because under what the CPI, chain CPI would do, is you would essentially lose over eight, close to $1,600 in benefits. I can't believe this. I can't believe we're even talking about it. Because if we're talking about going with the true market basket, what you should do is actually have this increased. I won't go through all of the numbers, but they are significant and they are severe. Now, there's another thing going around here on the floor. Oh, Senator Mikulski, why are you so upset? It'll hurt future beneficiaries. Well, I'm upset because no matter what time it affects a beneficiary, it affects a beneficiary. But what everyone fails to grasp is this will be an immediate, underline the word, immediate cut. According to the Social Security's chief actuary, if we pass this this year, people will, this change CPI begins December, tw December of 2012. So one year from this December, it would go into effect. And that means if you're 65 years old, your benefit will be reduced that year. By the time 10 years later, your benefit will have been reduced five times as much. And if you make it to 85, your benefit will actually be reduced by 10 times as much. This is, to me, a horrifying idea. The current CPIW, which is the way we, we call the cost of living, was used in 1972. It was the only measure we had at the time, and it was viewed as an advanced thing for an inflation-proof benefit. Now, when we look at it, what we know is that we know the purchasing power, uh, not the purchasing power, 
what is the market basket that seniors use. Now, change CPI might be fine in other areas or other categories. I'm not going to debate this here today. But what I do want to do this time, this place, I want to sound the alert. I want to ring the bell. I want to be at my battle station saying to every member of our caucus and every member of the people on the other side of the aisle, please read up on this. Know what we're doing. If you're going to vote, I don't want to hear buyer's remorse a year from now. I don't want to hear buyer's remorse two years from now. I don't want to hear from the seniors in my home state of Maryland to say, where were you, Barbara? Did you say anything? Did you do anything? So I'm saying here today, get out your policy books and for God's sake, read them. Read them. And don't read what this think tank does or that editorial board says, read the social security actuary. Because I'm telling you, we are about to do something that is irrevocable. You know, Mr. President, I believe in old-fashioned values. And one of the great ones is honor thy father and their mother and your mother. It's just not a great commandment to live by. It's sure a great public policy to govern by. The American people every day, particularly who work hard, you know, and live by the rules, go by the rules, paying to Social Security over a lifetime. We said to them, if you do that, your Social Security will be a guaranteed benefit. It will be a lifetime benefit. It will be reliable and undeniable, and it will be inflation-proof. Mr. President, FDR signed that bill that created that contract. Every president, regardless of the party, has kept that, con that promise. And it's up to this Congress not to shred the social contract on the seniors of the United States of America. Mr. President, I want to yield the floor to someone from the Finance Committee who's done so much work on this, such great work, such due diligence, and really has a grasp of both the policy and the impact that it has on the people. Mr. President, I'd like to yield the floor and hope the chair recognizes my wonderful uh, colleague from uh, Washington State, uh, Senator Maria Cantwell.